This is Dr. Chris's Radio of Horror show. Tonight on Radio of Horror, in association with a little network I'm involved with, the Spider Dude Radio Network, we have the owner of the network, Zach, on with us. Hello, hello. It's uh, a pleasure to be here this with uh, representing the Spidey Dude Radio Network here on yeah. the radio. Yes, and we will be sharing this with the Spider Dude Radio Network because we have a distinguished guest on the show with us who's worked on a number of great Marvel titles, and he is currently working on the Clea Strange book just entitled Strange. Thank you so much for coming back on the show with us, Marcelo. Hey, guys. How are you, how, how are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. It's uh, it was it was fantastic to find out that you were the uh, artist now on the uh, the current Doctor Strange book, just entitled Strange. Yeah, now it's just strange because uh, it's clear, clear now taking the mantle. And uh, I hope you guys are already enjoying the the book so far. I am. I have all three issues. Um, when I um, when she became Sorcerer Supreme, I was like, okay, that makes sense. I'll give this a try. Uh, you know, she hasn't been around for, God, quite some time, probably since, like, the 90s. Uh, I mean, she's had an appearance here or there, but uh, Clea Strange had been pretty much, like, off the book for, you know, for, for a number of years. Within, you know, again, she was in the annual, and then she was in, like, you know, a mini, you know, she was in, like, one story, and then uh, she kind of disappeared until the death of Doctor Strange, which, so it was great to uh, see her back. But how did you get involved with the, um, how did you get involved with the book? Well, uh, prior to the, to that, I was working on Amazing Spider-Man, uh, I I spent I think a couple of years on Amazing Spider-Man, and uh, actually doing uh, a, a, a few things Spider Spider-Man related. Uh, I was I had just finished I guess uh, the, the um, my issue of the Death of Doctor Strange miniseries. Mm -hmm. uh that was out last year yep uh i th i think my chapter was chapter four i guess uh which uh guests uh guess with a guest appearance of uh, black cat and uh well uh jad mckay uh wrote that issue actually, actually he wrote the entire mini and uh well i guess uh he saw what i did on that book he i think he liked what he saw um also, uh, I, I spent, a, I had, by then, I had to spend already a, a good time on Spider-Man, on Amazing Spider-Man, and I was actually working on, towards the end of Nick Spencer's run. So, by that time, everything was kind of wrapping up on the Spider-Universe, uh, per se. So, that was kind of a, uh, uh, things working together. I mean, uh, Spidey wrapping up. Plus, uh, myself doing my first, uh, 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 dipping my, 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 my pencil uh, for the first time on the uh, Doctor Strange uh, universe. Uh, so, next thing was getting invited to this new release, which is Strange. Um, and, I, of course, uh, I said yes, because uh, I was already uh, thinking about the next thing after Spidey. And I had, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, kind of had an experience drawing Doctor Strange. I think I, I actually drew Stephen Strange in a couple pages on uh, that miniseries. It was not actually uh, Stephen Strange, but post mortem Stephen Strange had appeared in a, a hospital room. Uh, so yeah, uh, it was kind of logical for me to be on, on this book right now. And uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Zach, did you have questions about uh, his run on Amazing? Which um, I had forgot, forgotten how many issues he had been on. Yeah, uh, he was definitely one of the. It felt like the you. You felt like you were one of the workhorses on, on the book. Uh, tell me about how that came about and what it was like working with Nick uh, Spencer and Nick Lowe. Oh, that was great. That was great, uh, especially Nick Lowe because I had more contact with him. I wish I, I wish I had, I, I wish I could say uh, more, more about Nick Spencer, but I don't think we actually traded any emails back back then. Uh, with some writers, you you talk uh, a lot. With some others, you kind of don't. It depends on on who's who. Actually, I think Nick Spencer is more like a private guy, and he was also very busy at the time, very very busy. 
uh, and uh, I remember uh, having a, actually, of course, Amazing Spider-Man. Well, for for any artist, uh, it's kind of it's kind of an honor to be on the book, and which was definitely for me having the opportunity to draw such a, a staple character in Marvel, and such a also such a uh, a remarkable run, which was Nick Spencer's run. A lot of people loved it. Some some did not, but that's kind of normal. And um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, in comic books, you know, yeah, it's, it's always it. opinions are always pretty divided. But uh, it's good for the book in any in any case. Uh, yeah, it, it was a good. Uh, by by the end of the run, it was a very uh, kind of crazy because things uh, the the scripts were coming in at a faster pace and uh, the story was. Uh, was was uh, coming to to the finish line. So uh, I think if you guys uh, come back to to that book, uh, you'll see uh, more artists popping in because we had to split work between more artists uh, mm -hmm. because it was it, it's it's I don't know if it's so typical, but it, it kind of happened with amazing at that time. But but uh, but it was cool. It was fun. It was fun. It was hard work, but it was always. But I have nothing uh, bad things to to say. I don't remember bad things of that period, actually. So from 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 that, so you saying it was like really chaotic because I mean at one point they were almost weekly. I mean it was it was kind of crazy towards the end of Nick's run. Yeah. Um. It, so was it primarily just coordinating with Nick Lowe to try to keep the trains running on time, so to speak? Oh yeah, uh, Nick Lowe was always trying to, uh, as a very competent editor that he is, he was always trying to uh, be ahead of what was coming, uh, script-wise. I mean, uh, he, he was always trying to cover the uh, incoming uh, schedule madness that was going to happen due to this <laughs> almost uh, kind of weekly releases. So uh, I remember he was trying to coordinate uh, uh, which... Uh, which artist was going to draw which issues or uh, the number of pages that was going to draw in a, in a, in, in a specific issue. So uh, towards the end, it was more typically, more typically than not, you were not going to draw the uh, typical 20 pages. You were going to draw, like I don't know, maybe 10 pages or maybe even less than that because the splitting uh, was going to be uh, we ha we were having a lot, of a lot of splitting of pages between, uh, I think it was myself and two or three other artists towards the end. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was uh, very uh, chaotic. But it seemed like you guys were like drawing specific like parts of the story, like uh, you know your a, a part, your B part, or your yeah. A plot, B plot type thing, and it all it all seemed to kind of flow a little better. Uh, was there a lot of just emailing back and forth with the other artists to to kind of make sure that there was some sort of consistency between the between the pages? Well, what I remember about uh, of that time was uh, I was mostly speaking to Nick Lowe, uh, Nick, and their assistant uh, editors, his assistant editors. They were trying to do their best to to do this type of coordination. You just mentioned I re I, I received references. I always saw. Uh, what the other guy that came before me, what did what he draw, so I could use as reference for my pages, and uh, that was not something uh, explicit. But what I figured uh, was that uh, the more action-oriented pages were directed to to one artist, not me. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but there was there was. A couple of artists actually they got the more action oriented and uh, my feeling was that my pages were more the type of uh dense kind of pages more um uh emotion filled kind of things more dialogue oriented i remember through the end i got most of the mephisto pages which was cool for me <laughs> uh because i i like drawing the uh, more you know uh, evil type character, the more the more, the more kind of emotion and shadows and and all that kind of stuff. 
uh, I like. So uh, I got a lot of the Mephisto ones. And Mephisto <laughs> was talking a lot with, with yeah, he was, he was talking with Harry Osborn uh, about the pact that was going on. Uh, the, the, the the plot behind the scenes. I was explaining to Harry Osborne what actually happened to Peter, mm -hmm. and those emotional scenes and dark scenes were more. Wait, you mean Doctor Strange, not Harry Os? No, uh, and, and the amazing, uh, amazing Spider-Man. The, the 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 Nick Spencer's run through through the end. Uh, we yeah, had well, there, I think there were some scenes where he was talking to both, like some scenes he talked to Strange, Mephisto did, and then there were some scenes he actually talked with Harry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, Mephisto, Mephisto was was talking to Harry, what? then uh, he was what? also talking to Stephen Strange. Was yeah. that always? I mean, the books have been out for a while. Things have passed. Mm -hmm. We didn't get what we wanted out of the end of the Nick Spencer run. Everyone wanted the marriage returned. Everyone wanted the marriage yeah. put back in place. Was <laughs> there ever? a massive change in the entire storyline the last minute the hail mary pass did not bring back the marriage did you draw stuff and then we're told to redraw a whole bunch of new pages did something change because it felt like they were going towards the return of the marriage of mary jane and peter parker the deal mm -hmm. that they made back years ago was finally with mephisto was finally going to be null and void because dr strange was involved and all we got out of it was Gwen never banged Norman Osborn. We don't have you don't we don't have Goblin babies anymore. That's yeah. it. That's all we got. It, it, it yeah. felt like there was a last minute twist. So was there any indication of like last minute twists, like from your interactions on drawing the books, or was it just you know business as usual? Yeah, you know, guys, I think that the main the main uh, target was to undo the whole uh, Goblin babies baby stuff, hmm. uh, which was yeah that was. I think we all, most, most of all, all of us, you know, we ag agree that uh, that was not the best idea to be, <laughs> to be <laughs> very, uh, you know, <laughs> easy going here. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, and, and, and honestly, if you ever read J. Michael Straczynski's Becoming Superman um, uh, biography about his entire horrible life story, <laughs> that Goblin Baby storyline kind of makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, I'm just saying, my God. go read that book, people. You will understand Goblin Babies a hell of a lot more. I don't know if you read Zach. Uh, I have not, but it looks like I'm going to have to. I'm going to warn you right now. This is not. Um, hey, honey, let's let's sit around the fireplace and have a have a read together of this story. No, this is a horror story. This is a horror oh story to the tenth degree of things that you never want to know about somebody. Not he's a perfectly human being he is a gentleman and he is a scholar and i would love to meet him one day but his upbringing is something of a horror movie written by jack ketchum oh my god yes. <laughs> well, yeah, i'm just saying yeah. the goblin babies makes a lot more sense when you learn about how he became who j michael Jasinski became well, so everybody can maybe cut some slack for for him maybe now. Let's just face it. There's more than one cook in that kitchen when that came to that storyline setting that up. So um, yeah, that that's true. There was another plot line they were planning on doing with that, which we are f fully well aware of. But I, honestly, yeah. it it just felt like that wasn't Nick Spencer's thing because Mephisto had mm -hmm. nothing to do with that story. He had everything to do with the marriage story, and then the yeah. big you know the end of this entire run of his this you know just this this amazing no pun intended just. Huge mm -hmm. story but it seemed but it seems like from what you're telling us though too it's like yeah. there was so many artists being brought in and so much coordination of of the, the storytelling because it also kind of seemed very abrupt that that nick spencer was leaving uh you know um so it, that, that's one of the reasons that i i was excited when when chris told me you were going to be on because i was like Oh, he can provide insight to that time period. So it seems like it just was like editorial, you know, sort of chaos, not in a, in a good way, trying to get those trains out on time, but also trying to get the stories to, to different artists to make it the, the stories coherent, and make it work. Um, which is why I think that they're, you know, I, I think reading the books and reviewing them, the, you know, cause I went back from the beginning of Nick Spencer's run mm -hmm. and kind of did a read through and, 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 
all the way to the current books, you know, it, it did seem like there was a linear story that he was trying to tell, but then like towards, towards really around the last remains arc, uh, things kind of started changing. Um, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, I was, I was, you know, the, the production of the, uh, Spider-Man comics is uh, probably uh, the 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 biggest the biggest uh, one in Marvel. I think mm -hmm. maybe uh, the X-Men office rivals with the Spider-Man office. Those are the big the big two inside Marvel, I guess. So it's a lot of a lot of a lot of people working uh, a lot of back and forth. We as artists sometimes we don't have so much access to to the backstage of things as you might think uh mm -hmm. depending on who you are of course i don't know maybe i don't know maybe guys like uh i don't i don't even want to say mark not even mark bagley but maybe pat gleason pat gleason was a, a guy that was very involved with everything back then and now he's even I, he's writing the he's writing the book right now i don't i don't know if he's still writing spider-man he wrapped up the beyond uh books uh, a couple of months ago now it's it's zeb wells and ramita jr doing the books uh, now okay so so you see uh, he even uh, he even got to write stories so at that level of pat i think he he probably know, knows more than me but i tell I, i'll tell you the impression that i had was that the undoing of the marriage was never in the plans that's what i think okay i cannot uh assure 100 percent that i'm right but this just the uh the feeling that I have that it was actually not in the plans. Uh, different from the Goblin Babies. Yeah, that was pretty much a, an intention of Marvel to undo that. That was a big mistake. Uh, so they want to do undo that. But the marriage, uh, the marriage, I think it's uh, very convoluted inside Marvel. I think, I think it divides a lot of opinions. Maybe because of the still the lack of a... Uh, a consensus uh, uh, close to a hundred percent people, you know, of, of people agreeing uh, to undo that. Maybe that's why it's, it, it still did not happen. Maybe one day, I don't know, because uh, Marvel is not known as DC for rebooting stuff. You know, uh, Marvel does the soft reboots, but since it had just happened with Nick Spencer's run, Maybe we sh maybe we we're gonna have to wait a little bit more if right. you know if, for for the people who want to see that marriage being undone. Maybe hmm. yeah, maybe you guys are gonna have to be a little bit more patient. That's that's my gut feeling. One last question is uh, so unfortunately uh, the, the, the more more is canceled out from me due to no one's fault other than a pandemic that got, got completely out of control. Do you have any insight about how Morbius was supposed to wrap up? What I knew back then, the plan was let's do five issues. If it sells well, we're going to extend to number 10. So, two arcs of five issues each arc. Okay. Uh, which is more or less for new releases. Uh, I can even tell you guys that the book that I'm working right now, Strange, follows more or less the same, uh, same logic. Uh, uh, hmm. Yeah, it's, it sells well, five issues. Well, five, I'm sorry, five issues. If it doesn't sell well, gets canceled. If it sells good, it's going to be extended to until number 10 or number 12, probably. And then it's going to have a re-release from a new number one or canceled, you know, and canceled for good. Morbius was, was following this logic and somewhat attached to the release of the movie, which was going to happen in 2020. Right. Yep. So everything got delayed because of that pandemic. Not just the comics, but also the movie. We got to number five. Yes, I got pulled from Morbius to be on Spider-Man, and then some some other artist was going to take over the book in my place. Right. Okay. I think that never happened. Um, as far as I know, that never happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, film got canceled, and because of the movie which was supposed to be another uh, sales support for the book, then they then came to the decision, okay, let's cancel this. The, uh, you know, makes no sense anymore for us to extend Morbius up to number 10 if there's not even a, 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 a film release anymore. 
to you know for both things to be working uh, in the market together. Right, know? and honestly, the movie, regardless of when it came out, would have hurt that book. That movie was not great. I mean, there was there's yes. no what two and a half years, Zach. It it, it got moved around. I think it got moved around like nine times. Okay, there was no saving yeah. that movie being as bad as it was. And yes, right. Multiverse of uh, Madness, or I'm sorry, uh, whatever Spider-Man's multiverse movie was called. Uh, uh, no Way Home. No Way Home had mm -hmm. an effect on Morbius to be pushed back again from January, which it was supposed to come out right after the last Spider-Man movie. Not No Way Home, Far From Home, and before Venom 2. That yeah. was definitely been confirmed. You go to like doublemidnight.com, who's a great website for like picking through all of the small news articles that get overlooked about the inside story of Hollywood sometimes. Uh, they point out that Morbius was supposed to come out between the two Spider Man movies and the two Venom films. And that didn't happen, and it became a cluster F of exponential proportions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we got what we got. So I, it got I, moved like I think two times before the pandemic hit, and yeah. then the pandemic hit uh, because they were going to do reshoots. I think is what as is, is my understanding. It's honestly like Sony can do one thing, and it seems to be Ghostbusters, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to, well, listen, they they made a lot of money off Venom, okay? Right, but they're not good <laughs> movies. And let's face it, the Spider Man movies are Kevin Feige's baby. Yeah, I I, I think I think. Those are, those are Marvel movies from beginning to end. You watch a Venom movie, that is a Sony movie. <laughs> very, yeah, the, 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 tone and, the tone and tenor of, of the movies are very different when you watch Incred like Morbius and Sony. Incredibly yeah. different, incredibly different. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have here. i got to jump on to another interview. But, Marcelo, thank you so much for coming back on the show to give us a, some insight into Strange. It's, I absolutely love it. I do hope the book is getting picked up by people. I don't know what the sales are right now on it, but I absolutely love it because I love Clea Strange. I love that first opening of the first issue where she is like lounged out, you know, I don't know if she's drunk, but she's passed out in the in the cloak of levitation and who comes knocking at the door demanding the title of Sorcerer Supreme, but it's Victor Von Doom. And Wong yeah. is like, you have the meeting with the Avengers and you have to go deal with this other mystical thing. And by the way, Dr. Doom is here and he wants the title of Sorcerer Supreme. And Dr. Doom is basically borderline like a sexist being like, oh, a woman cannot be Sorcerer Supreme. And Cleo's yeah. like, Victor, you're not that bad. Let's just <laughs> stop all of the pop and circumstance and you know get, get the hell get the hell off my uh my front porch or whatever i'm sorcerer supreme and that's the way it's gonna be and he's like you haven't heard the last from me woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, and uh and, you know the book is selling well good i uh, see yeah last time i saw it was was selling well being a good you know it's having a good reception. Good. good. And, well, I don't want to hear uh, people I, complaining about no female characters out there, and you have one right now <laughs> controlling well, a book, we, we and she's not a, a clone, and she's not a she's not a She Hulk. You know what I mean? She's no, not no. a she's not Supergirl. She's not a female yeah. version of her male counterpart. Clea Strange is her own individual person. You know, and I'm I'm very much uh, liking the char the character. Uh, each issue, I I like her a little bit more because. She has a personality of her own, which I think Jed McKay just nailed it. You know, uh, she's kind of cocky at times, but she can be because she's actually a very powerful entity in the Marvel Universe. She has this uh, yeah. half, half, uh, um, she's, oh a, she's, she, she's the yeah, Lord she's, of the Dark Dimension. Exactly. Yeah. Lord, Lord Lady, the Lady of the Dark Dimension, excuse me. Yeah, she's a half breed of, of those people. So she's very powerful, actually, and um, I'm actually right now drawing the wrapping up of the first arc, which is going to start bringing the story to a different level. So I hope you guys stick to at least number five and see what's going on. It's going to be very exciting, you know, and I'm pretty sure we're going to push the book until number 10 or number 12. I, 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 we're going to have an entire year of uh, Clea... Doing what she's doing until they bring back Doctor Strange. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. I I don't even know, man. I I, I still don't know about and, that. And but. hey, and 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 positive word of mouth when the movie's good, whereas Morbius can hurt the sales of a book. I mean, Charlie Theron. The movie's been out for a month now, but Charlie Theron oh. playing Clea Strange in the movie. Yes. Yeah, and that's a that was a that was a nice surprise at the end of the film, right? And I mean, she's a huge actress. She's playing this character who now has her own book. 
that's yeah. that's the type of thing you have people going to the comic book store and being like, who is the woman at the end of the Doctor Strange movie? Oh, that, go that buy this me. comic book. That's her comic book right now on the shelves. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's huge. I I I I just hope Clea sticks uh, as a as a a list or a character into the Marvel universe. Even right. if they bring back Stephen Strange, I don't know. Maybe they both can be. Yeah, uh, on that in some capacity. I, I mean, know, how many like spider people thing. do we have? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marcelo, thank you for the insight too uh, into the into the creation of on uh, on amazing. So that's that was really invaluable. Oh, yeah. that's my pleasure. Yeah, anytime you guys want to chat about that, I'm up for it. Yeah, maybe we'll wait until the end of Doctor Strange, uh, the end of Strange, and then we'll we'll have you back on to talk about everything you can't talk about because I know you're under certain things that you can't talk about. So. But uh, yeah. <laughs> we will. Uh, I will. I will be in touch with you, Marcel, when this is going to broadcast. Thank you so much, Zach, for joining us. Why don't you plug the Spider Dude Network? Yeah, you can find everything over on spidey-dude.com. Uh, you can find us all our podcasts on there. The Spidey Dude Experience is our flagship show, but we got our other show, like Make My Mayday, talking about Spider Girl and Spider Girl World. Uh, Amazing Spider Man Classics goes through uh, Spider Man from the beginning. Uh, now the season two uh, reboot is uh, being hosted by our good friend. Uh, uh, Jack and his son, so a father and son duo, and then we have, of course, the Salvi Sema era podcast hosted by our very own Chris. Yeah, so. which has got a new episode coming up uh, at the time that we're recording this, but the uh, new episode will feature the beginning of the two, the, orig the original Tombstone story arc, uh, which is coincident enough uh, ties directly into what's happening currently in Amazing. Yes, sir. And uh, also, if you like Gargoyles, we have uh, Voices from the Eerie uh, Gargoyles podcast uh, talking about talking with Greg Weisman every single episode and various people that worked on the show. So if you're if you like Gargoyles and like the, that particular cartoon, you can definitely check it out.